Hey everyone, for those of you who are new here, I'm Josh. In this video, I want to talk about rejection and breakups and a question that I believe is incredibly worth asking yourself when you're dealing with rejection and breakups. And that question is, would you even want this person if they came back to you? I recently made a short video about this topic and it's something that interests me so much that I wanted to make a longer video to go more in depth in it because this is something I had to learn for myself because I used to be the kind of dude where I would meet amazing women and if things didn't work out with them, I would think, you know, if they came back further down the road, I would probably consider seeing them again. But now I think a bit differently and there are a whole lot of reasons that I'll jump into here, but I hope that by the end of this video will help you think more consciously when it comes to rejection and breakups as well, because you should be asking yourself that question. If this person comes back into your life, would you really want them back? Would you want them to be in your life again? And you need to think about this objectively. You need to remove your emotions from the equation, which is very difficult, but it's something you want to do because otherwise you can waste your time. If this person does end up coming back and you let them in, you could lose a lot of time and energy on them because they may not have done any inner work. They may still be exactly who they were when things didn't work out with them the first time. And if you continue to see them again from that place where they haven't worked on themselves, you are going to repeat the past. Things probably aren't going to work out again. You're going to run into the same issues you had before, and it will be a waste of your time and energy. So you need to be conscious here. And as you can probably already tell, the important thing when it comes to whether or not you should let someone back into your life is whether or not they've actually done inner work. Have they actually changed? Because if they haven't, why would you let them back in? Don't waste your time and energy. It's all about having enough self-respect to not want to waste your time. You don't get more of it, right? It's the one resource we can never get more of. Your energy, I mean, that is something you can cultivate over time. So that isn't really a resource that you know you will never get more of. But your time? Think about it. If you spend two years on someone who isn't meant for you, that's two years of your life that is gone now. That's two years that could have been spent seeing other people and hopefully finding someone who's a better fit for you. You need to be conscious with dating unless you don't plan on having kids or getting married or anything like that and you're going about life willy-nilly, which is okay, but you need to determine for yourself whether or not you actually want to do that because a lot of people may go down that route unintentionally. So be conscious with your dating life. You really should be. It's something that most people kind of downplay the importance of, but think about it. You spend so much time with these people that they will inevitably rub off on you. And if they're not a great fit for you, they're gonna steer you in the wrong direction and waste your time that you can't get more of. So it's really important to think about these things. So if someone hasn't done any inner work, you do not want to let them back in usually. There may be some rare cases where there are outliers that somehow things work out when someone comes back and they haven't done any inner work maybe. Well, usually because they're going to be willing to do inner work with you that second time around. But you need to really see whether or not someone actually upholds what they're saying. Because anybody can talk out of their rear end, right? And that doesn't mean anything. Actions speak way louder than words. So you need to actually pay attention to what someone does, not what they say. And there are some very manipulative people out there who can tell you everything you want to hear about, oh, I did all the inner work, I'm a better person now. But until you actually see that their actions back that up, do not hop into a relationship with them again. Or if you do make that mistake, at least be willing to end it when you realize that they aren't actually the person they made themselves out to be. You just don't want to waste your time and energy on people like this, especially if they're manipulative because that's not good. So it's just really important to be objective and conscious and to remove your emotions from the equation so that they don't lead you astray. Often when we make bad dating decisions and relationship decisions, it's because our emotions are getting in the way. They steer us in the wrong direction because people can reel us in with emotional things that connect with us, saying the right thing, doing the right thing at the right moment, things that they know that we really like and enjoy. But that doesn't actually mean that they're good for us, right? A great example of this would be how bad men are really good at charming women. But should women actually be going with bad men? Probably not often, right? But he has a lot of qualities that women will find exciting. He can be a bit mysterious. Some women like uncovering the mystery of who he is and finding out all his qualities. He can often be incredibly confident and charismatic, which again, many women enjoy that. 
but then he has a lot of bad qualities like cheating usually a lot of these guys can be a bit selfish so they don't think about how their actions impact the women they see so they'll cheat on her or they may just not care that much about her and her emotions so they treat her in very poor ways so yeah that's just one example of how people can lure you in emotionally but be a horrible match for you so you really want to remove your emotions from the equation as much as possible be objective be conscious, take time to actually think about things rationally and ask yourself whether or not someone actually is good for you. So it's just important to figure out whether or not you would actually want someone if they came back into your life. Because we can get a bit tripped up after rejection or breakups. It can make us pine for someone, especially if they broke up with us or they rejected us. It can make us feel like they're slightly better than us because, you know, that little power dynamic with rejection and breakups where if they do it first, then all the power is kind of in their lap, right? So it can make us feel less than them. So suddenly they're up here compared to us. So when they come back in our lives, we're like, oh my God, this amazing person is back. But maybe not. Maybe they didn't see your value and they left you because of that. So maybe you're actually a better human being than they are. You never truly know. And this is why you should strive to be as objective and conscious about these decisions as possible. Because yeah, maybe they're not actually all that great, even though they rejected you. Don't feel bad about it. Don't think they're better than you just because they rejected you. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, I've often said you could be the best person on the planet and you will still get rejected by people. You'll still get broken up with by other people. And it could be simply because they think you're better than them. So they wanna leave you before you leave them. They're thinking that you're going to end up leaving them at some point because they think you're this amazing human being, which if you were the best person on the planet, you would be. And that's going to trigger their insecurities and make them think, holy crap, this person is too good for me. They're gonna leave me at some point. So I better reject them now to avoid that pain in the future. So there you go. Like, do not think someone is better than you just because they reject you or broke up with you. It doesn't mean anything. Try not to let that power dynamic get to you because it's all arbitrary and it's truly at the end of the day, it doesn't mean much at all. So now that I've pretty much covered the meat and potatoes of the video, I wanna give you a little bonus and just share some personal insight on why I decided to even cover this topic because this is something that's near and dear to my heart because of my prior experience. And well, for those of you who've known me for a while, you know that I am usually pretty conscious when I date. I don't often date random women. I don't date just to have fun in the bedroom because to me, that isn't very fulfilling. I date because I wanna meet a woman who could be the mother of my children. I wanna find a woman who will tackle life with me. I want a high quality woman who is amazing in that regard. So dating can be very hit or miss for me in that regard because I usually won't really spend my time on a woman if I can tell that she's not what I'm looking for in that regard. And looking for a life partner, that's a pretty high standard, right? So I don't meet many women I actually want to date more than like three dates really. And I do sometimes run into the issue of, you know, I'll enjoy a woman's company so much that I will kind of give her a bit more time than I should but I do know there probably isn't much of a future there, but I tend not to make that mistake too much because I know better by now. So usually if I'm actually spending time with a woman and seeing her more than two dates, it's because I think there's potential with her. So this means that when things don't work out, it sucks because I thought that she was going to be good enough for me to find that life partner finally. And I have had a few instances where I meet great women who seem amazing at first and then I find out that there's some qualities that are just kind of off. There are things that don't quite make it so that things will work out between us and it's horrible. And that is actually what makes me realize that if they were to come back into my life, I don't know that I'd really be open to that. I used to think that way because I was coming from that scarcity mindset and thinking, oh, these were amazing women, right? But the qualities that led to things not working out between us I do realize now we're big enough that I wouldn't really want them to come back. And it sucks because if they had just done maybe a few more years of inner work, they would have been perfect. They would have been probably really close to what I'm looking for, but they just weren't there yet. So if they came back and they had done that inner work, that would be fantastic. Like I would be ready to go again if everything else worked out logistically and whatnot because yeah, I have moved to Colorado. So now all the ladies back in Los Angeles, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to date them. I'm not going to do long distance. But if they were somehow, things were to work out, and they had done that inner work, I would be open to it. 
But if they hadn't done any inner work and they're the same as they were when things didn't work out with them the first time, even with all their great qualities, I mean, these were great women. They just had a few things that were off. Like one woman lacks self-respect, for instance. She actually let her ex-boyfriend talk her into having her walk behind him, which is crazy to me. Like this guy clearly wasn't that masculine because he needed to have her walk behind him in order for him to feel good about himself. And yeah, don't even get me started. But I knew that was a red flag when she first told me it, but she just had so many other great qualities. I kind of overlooked it. And then she ended up going back to that guy. And I was just like, this is cool. <laughs> You're going back to the guy who basically didn't treat you well. And also he kind of sounded a bit manipulative based off other things she said. So that just demonstrated to me that she lacks self-respect, which sucked because I liked so many other qualities she had. We had so many things in common. We were very compatible in many regards, but she just lacked something huge. That's self-respect. She probably needed a bit more inner work. And yeah, it was really unfortunate, but she was probably one of the first women to really make me consider if she came back, would I be willing to go again? And the more I thought about it, I was like, probably not because I just couldn't look past the fact that she would go back to someone like that when she had me in front of her at the time. And I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I know what I bring to the table. And it just, it sucked that she decided to go for that dude again. God only knows if he'll still make her walk behind him and whatnot. And yeah, so it's just unfortunate. But that made me realize not everyone is worth letting back into your life, even if you thought they were great originally, because I mean, even to this day, I would say she is a great woman. She just needs to do a little bit more inner work to get to that point where she'd be what I would be looking for in a relationship. But she would be good for many men out there. And hopefully she will work on that self-respect quality because she deserves the best. She deserves way more than that guy she went back to. And it is what it is, right? Always ask yourself, would you want them if they came back? It's just an important question to consider, especially from a place of being objective and conscious because you just want to make sure that even if someone was great in the past, if there was something off about them that led to things ending between the two of you, you need to make sure that they've actually worked on those things before you let them back in. Because maybe you wouldn't actually want them back. Maybe it would just be a repeat of the past and you're wasting your time on them. So be conscious and objective. But that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I truly hope you enjoyed this video. If you like content like this, be sure to throw a thumbs up on it for the algorithm that helps me out immensely. If you aren't already subscribed, feel free to do that if you enjoy this content. And let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about this topic. And feel free to share your experience with this as well. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Arrivederci!